Let's let's show on this because sure. we, we started with the base of the little mm -hmm. basket or the bowl. Right. I thought I'd show how to make uh, this basket. Mm -hmm. I, I designed a three-color basket with beaded hearts, and um, both sides of the basket are interesting. It could you could have the hearts on the outside, the hearts on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and the I'm beads all, are inside. Right. And mm -hmm. this this way I made it inside, but you can also. Mm -hmm. reverse it uh, when you're finished. And you experimented with with graph paper that you through the years have realized mm -hmm. if you use just plain graph paper mm -hmm. it distorts the image. Right, the as motif. you can see um, this looks very different from the actual mm -hmm. uh, beaded uh, heart so I've developed a special graph paper that takes into consideration the shape of the stitch and where it's placed. So mm -hmm. I, I um, designed the heart and the uh, triangle motif and uh, crocheted the base. And even though it's a three color basket, I'm only crocheting with two threads at once. And then you transferred this pattern to regular graph paper. Right, because I find it very difficult to follow the pattern, which you read from bottom to top, um, with these uh, tapestry crochet shapes. Oh. I find the um, square easier. is easier. You know which, which stitches over which stitch. For instance, if you look at any of these stitches on the tapestry paper and the stitch under it, you don't know, is it under the one on the right or the left? Okay, so, if you'll go ahead and show sure. us so that we can see part of sure. this. Sure. Well, with tapestry crochet, again, you're carrying a thread. And so I will crochet a few more of these white stitches. Mm -hmm. And the real trick is when you're about to change colors, I'll do it now like this up to the blue. Uh -huh. Right. I pull through two loops of the old color and while there's still two loops on the hook, that's when I pull through the blue the, the new the color. Second color. Now mm -hmm. on my uh, web page at tapestrycrochet.com, I have um, several uh, patterns and I also have tutorials of how to carry, how to do the tapestry crochet stitch. And, and now you're going to continue right. with the blue thread. So I'm I'm continuing with this. And I need one full one. I'm going to have to switch again. So I have uh, two loops and then pull through the with the white. white. Another uh -huh. thing I want to mention is how I hold the hook. First of all, I like to use hooks with handles. Mm. Um, they're it's easier, easier to, to hold. Mm -hmm. And there are many different types. This is actually for rug hookers. Mm -hmm. And the way I put the thread in my hand, I usually wrap it around my index finger. And that allows me to um, to crochet tightly to create a lot of creates attention. attention, doesn't right. it? Right. So with this, we started at the bottom and increased, so it's flat. Then when I stopped increasing, the sides come up, start coming up, which right. we can see now about adding the beads. Right. Part. So now this is the same project, the fun a little part. bit, right? <laughs> and I really do think this is fun. I enjoy doing this when I'm watching TV or flying on planes or whatever. It's a good conversation piece. It is. Um, let's see, I actually need a white one right here. So I need one white stitch, and when I have two loops on, that's when I'll switch to the red. Yeah, now for the beads, I know that I need 10 beads right here, so as a, an extra check, so I won't make a mistake, I put 10, I sli slide 10 beads down mm -hmm. and have them right here. And so I put in my hook, slide down the bead next to one. the work, yeah, just, just one, one at a time, and then continue the stitch, and, do and that then the bead, right, and the bead will fall uh, to the back of the stitch. Mm -hmm. Well, you've done this enough. I'm sure you can watch TV or, or carry on a conversation and do this, but I think for beginners, it would be important for to, to really concentrate on, on, because you want it to be successful. Right, right. And then, let's see, okay, so once we've finished all of that, mm -hmm. uh, to finish the basket, I just do a plain single crochet uh, edging. And you can get fancier, though, and do all kinds of other uh, crochet stitches. So, uh, see, I'm being very And you said this is a number three yarn. Right, mm -hmm. that's a number three crochet thread. mercerized cotton. And you can mm -hmm. use really uh, anything. I like to use this uh, heavier thread for um, these particular beads, but for I've beads. also used mm -hmm. finer threads. Mm -hmm. So when I'm about to finish, I just uh, cut the carried thread flush. Just cut the carried thread. Right, okay. which would be the red. And it's already been anchored in here from being oh, carried. You're it right up close, so I okay. snip it flush, and then I just do a slip stitch mm -hmm. 
with the white. And then, whoops. It's easier when you're sitting down yeah, doing it's, all of it's, this. <laughs> it's easier when I'm not on a TV show. <laughs> Let's see. Do a slip stitch. Oh. It literally is a slip yeah. stitch. It's slipping me up here. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm doing a slip stitch. And then I cut this thread with about an 8 inch tail. Oh. And then yarn over oh, and pull it, pull it, it through. through. Right. Yeah, it makes a hard knot right. in or ties it off. Oh. And then I just um, go back and forth pulling it through those top two stitches um, to the anchor it. Or just two no, or I do it for about two inches, okay. something like that. Then after we finish that, because we would like to give it a little shape mm -hmm. or flare, you kind of have a trick for doing that too. Right. Well, the what I do next is steam iron it. And it's nice to have something um, uh, firm inside. Mm -hmm. So I, I use a can. And I've collected a, a number of different types and put it in a towel mm -hmm. and then take my steam iron and, and we are using steam. Right, mm -hmm. and so it's you have to be hot. careful that uh -huh. you don't burn yourself. And then I press down and steam it, and on the side. Um, for some of the projects I do, they're really out of shape before I iron them, uh -huh. and then once I iron them, they all really perk up. Do you ever have to kind of work with it and mold it or anything? Yeah, sometimes I do, especially the larger pieces. Uh, you can also uh, take uh, the towel and put it over the beads and mm -hmm iron it from the inside. Oh, because you don't want to directly put the steam right. on the beads. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think I think if you were to put the um, iron right on the beads, it might be too hot. crack them. So I've also done things like mm -hmm. that. So the steaming is really mm -hmm. the last step, and then you're right, ready to Right, it's the last step, and then you have enjoy. to decide if you want it like this, or you can flip it around and If have you want it like the beads that. inside right, or outside. Right, inside or mm -hmm. out, and with the tapestry crochet, of course, it looks great. Um, either way, because mm -hmm. the threads are contributing to the pattern and well, to the Well, you certainly make it look easy to do, and I think it's something just like well. with any other new project mm -hmm. that you take on. You mm -hmm. practice, read the instructions, practice right. a lot. So I hope everyone will, will make one of these. Well, we appreciate It'd you coming. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Cheryl.